Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Where are you right now? Were you you were in Arizona last time we spoke? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm in Phoenix right now. Ooh, is it hot out there? Hot as hell. Blazing. Man, because I lived, you know, I lived in Phoenix for three months last summer, and it was the hottest three months of my entire life. God dang. Thanks for hitting me up. <laughs> I know I was like I actually moved there for a job and then after three months I changed my mind and I quit and I, <laughs> I had to um I had to break my lease I had to I, I bought all new furniture I just completely quit and was like I gotta go home it was it was pretty insane but um yeah so I, I definitely know what the Phoenix heat is all about <laughs> oh my god you playing yes. it's fun out here yeah though. so it's what it's fun out here yeah, yeah, Phoenix is nice. It's a nice city. There's lots of cool bars and restaurants, and I'm no hate at, for Phoenix at all. It was just way too freaking hot, man. <laughs> like, yeah. couldn't do it. Um, so thanks for joining me. For anyone that's joining in right now, um, I started a new show called Honey, I'm Home in the last week or two, and it's basically me going live with people that, whether it's musicians, athletes, comedians, um, whatever it is, I just want to know what you're up to during quarantine. How has your life changed drastically or not? So... Um, obviously, you know, you play football, you're a punter, you can't play right now. Um, how have you been dealing with not being able to do your favorite thing in the world? <laughs> uh, well, it, I would consider it one of my, one of my thing, one of my favorite things that I enjoy doing, which is kicking. Um, for a lot of people that actually know me, like, uh, sports isn't a really big thing for me. I just like to kick. I just kick. You're shit. just good at it. Even though it's not a yeah. thing, you're just really yeah. freaking good at it. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just, um... Man, I've just been chilling at the crib, just chilling, um, working on music and stuff. I'll be doing, like, dance, EDM music and stuff, so just getting better with that. I ended up buying some turntables and just learning how to uh, DJ, so whatever team I end up going to, I'll be able to, like, turn up in the club or whatever after we win a game or whatever. But um, just training, too. So I've been doing everything that I normally do. I'm used to being at the house all by myself most of the time. Sometimes I have people come over. Sometimes do you live, you live alone? Yeah. So quarantine's kind of like the same for you because you're alone. You live alone anyway, so you're just me chilling. and Elmo. We just be chilling. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was gonna ask you about your music. You definitely have a, a heavy like EDM influence in in a lot of your stuff, like very dancey. So where does that come from? Like when you were growing up, is that what you normally typically listen to, or why is that like kind of where you went with your music? Well, at first when I was uh, when I was in college, I listened to a lot of hip hop and stuff. My mom wouldn't let us listen to music with cussing in it when I was younger, so <laughs> I would have to listen to, like, these Disney Channel-ass songs and stuff. And <laughs> Man, it was cool, though, because it, it, it kind of um, brought in my horizon younger. But um, when I moved to California when I was with the Raiders, then that's when I started listening to, like, EDM, like, dance music. And I'm like, this shit's good, because it's, like, good feel-good music. Yeah, yeah, it is. It always, like, no matter what mood you're in, and when you, when you hear that, like, you kind of want to get up and, and dance. So. Yeah. True, uh, true. So you said you just bought a turntable? Yeah, like I, bought some, I bought some of uh, the little mini turntables over here. That's let's see bored. it, let's see I it. I got bored for a second and decided to get them, so I ain't got it up yet, though. I got the turntables, I got a little font machine in the corner, so <laughs> That's lot. awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad you are uh, doing what you love, which is, would you say music is your number one love then? <sighs> I think they're both up there because I really enjoy kicking. And I really enjoy doing the music. It's just that it kind of feels, it feels like what you got going on. I'm sure it feels good when people admire what you create and you creating your, your segment and seeing people that really support it is a really good feeling. So I think I get more joy out of people listening and streaming all the songs I have. Um, yeah, but also, definitely. Yeah, I appreciate the kicking applauses too. <laughs> all right well obviously we're gonna have um we're gonna have questions for whether it's for you or me probably mostly for you so i'm gonna open the chat up um scroll up see if anybody has anything that they want to ask um wyatt pakeman when are you going back to the nfl um you can answer that if you want to no i'm gonna answer um shoot my plan is whenever i'm waiting for a freaking phone call that's all i'm waiting for <laughs> Isn't that what we're all waiting for? We're waiting for a phone call for our dreams to come true. Like, when that Hell phone yeah. call comes in, that's when you do it, you know? I know. I know. No, it's – I mean, shoot, I know what's going to happen. I feel like I did what I had to do in the XFL uh, to get back, and unfortunately things didn't work out um, the way I wanted them to. But 
I mean, it all happens a certain way. And I look at it as a positive because I got a chance to get better with music. And now that, um, I don't know, I actually worked out for the Texans. I was supposed to be uh, playing last year. My leg popped during a workout. So, Ouch. yeah, that shit sucked. But it was meant to happen. It was meant to happen. Um, like I said, I got better with music and stuff. So, like, I know, I know that's going to be a really good part of my life right there. But um, I'm just ready now. I did my thing in the XFL. Killed it out there in St. Louis, I felt like. And that shit was fun. Yeah, it looked fun. It looked, all your posts look like you had a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. we have we have Gemini 54 saying you need to be back with the Raiders. They never had a punter like you. It must feel good to get to get comments like that, you know, saying Hell you're yeah. the best. At Man, what you do. Being with the Raiders was one of the funnest times ever because like like the um the persona that people got, like shit, I feel like I fit with I fit with them really good. Like, um that was Man, they did all the weird stuff that I would normally do, and it felt like home. But unfortunately, it's no it's no loyalty with uh, professional sports, and that's what that's something I had to understand when I um when I was playing or when I got let go from the Raiders. I was like, damn, I feel like I did so much with them, and it's like they just gonna let me go like that. But yeah. nobody nobody controls anything except for the people that, and it's a, a group decision. So. Well, the whole entertainment industry is crazy. Whether you're an athlete, whether you're a musician, whether you're like me, a radio personality, like you can get let go like that. It's, yeah. it's a, that's why I always say when people ask me for advice on like being in the industry or whatever, I'm always like, you, you can only do it if you really love it. If you love nothing else, because it's a hard place to be. You, you might get told no 7,000 times before you get told yes in, in this industry. And I consider like, athletes in the same industry as musicians because it's all entertainment right i mean it's sports but it's entertainment for the masses so yeah. definitely definitely tough to get a no but you know you're good at it so i know it, man you know it's, it's, i know i like i'm like man i don't know i've kind of been paying attention to like uh if they've been picking up kickers and punters i'm like shit i'm waiting for them to hit me up like <laughs> you know so what have you done for me lately thing and i was like lately i was the last one to play football just like a lot of other players that's been playing like they've proven themselves but hey, it's a waiting game, so I'm down to wait. I'm going to just keep making more music. It, look, it looks like everybody yeah, everybody in this chat is, like, waiting for you to get back to it. They love you. Um, somebody wrote, Dad, Daddy Gabber said, I was at the game when you danced with the flag. Do you know, <laughs> do you know what he's talking about? Tell, tell yeah, me that yeah. story. Wanna, we want to hear the story. So we was playing the Buffalo Bills, and um, shoot, while we was playing, they ran into me earlier in the game, but, like, Man, that's why I was uh, also telling somebody, if they play NFL games with no fans in the stands, you're going to be able to hear all the trash talking you can. But, like, it was some, <laughs> it was some people talking so much shit. And I was like, man, y'all funny. And they just kept talking. It's so weird. And I was like, all right. So <laughs> it, it was kind of like my way of flexing. Like, uh, <laughs> it was just my way of flexing. I was actually really angry when I did it. And, uh Shit, it was, I just got in my feelings. I was like, man, F y'all, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a video but, of that? You could like, you could post that up as like a throwback Thursday this week. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would. You know, you got to play the game. You got to play the game. So I got to, I got to be Mr. Good Boy over here for a while. Yeah, yeah, I know. Before you get, before you get like your next shot again, you got to be like tame. And I feel the I same way in radio. Like when, when I'm, a, I'm when I'm a, you can technically be a free agent in radio, right? Like I don't belong to a specific company. I do a show right now. Mm -hmm. um, I do it from San Francisco. It airs out in the Central Coast. It's called voice tracking. I don't have a contract with them. So I'm a free agent, right? So it's like, you gotta be on your best behavior to get your next big gig. Once you have it, well, you still, you kind of have to be on good behavior, but you can like mess around just a little bit because yeah. you're, you're like in a good spot at that point, so. Yeah, well, it's all about having fun too. Like it's all about having fun. Like, yeah, yeah, life is all about fun because, like, I mean, especially in these hard times, you realize that life is short, and right now we're all stuck at home and just trying to get out of this thing, and that's when you really realize, like, man, what am I doing with my life? And when, as soon as this thing is done, like, you just want to go back and, yeah. and get what you get what you came for, you know? Exactly, exactly. Um, so have you been learning any other hobby? I mean, I know you just bought a turntable and music's your thing, but have you been doing any other hobbies that, like, you never really thought you would do, but now that you're stuck at home, you're kind of just doing now? Man, I feel, it, I hate to say this, but I feel really mature doing house chores. <laughs> and I really, good. I hate, I hate this mature BS. Like, I've been walking around the damn house looking at flowers and shit, looking at plants. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to be a plant stuff. dad. A plant oh dad. Oh, my God. 
It's Man. hard. You know, it's so hard to, to like have a plant and keep it alive because I thought it was easy. I'm like, you just need to put it in the sunlight and water it. But every plant is different. And we bought a, um, what are they called? A pe like a peace lily, I think is what it's called. Yeah. We bought one of those and it died in like a week. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> Shoot, man. It's so, so I'm, hard. I've been kind of scared crazy a little bit. I'm he's shouting out to the plants and stuff. They all got different <laughs> names and stuff now. No. Like, what's up, boy? <laughs> do they really? Did you name them? No, nah, I'm just talking shit. Oh, like, like, oh I'm God. close. I'm close to giving them names. You should at this point because they might start having children soon. <laughs> uh, man. Oh, my God. I All saw right, you did. See. I saw you did a video of. Uh, you don't ever promote your milk and cookies video that much. Why? Yeah, my well cookies. So I that was from I think 2017 was when <laughs> I did that song, and and it's still like I feel like it's still everyone's favorite song that I've done so far. I like but I it. have I have another song that isn't out yet called Catch Flights, and I'm so excited to release it. I think it's the best song I've ever written, and I'm like waiting for the perfect time. Cause I, so I shot a music video for it a few months ago, but then because of quarantine and, and trying to get it, um, I have an editor who has to actually go to a computer lab because he actually, he's all the way in South America right now. He, was, he went there to shoot a movie, like he got hired and he got yeah. stuck in quarantine there and his laptop isn't like big enough to hold all the gigs for my video. So he can't even edit it. So I've been waiting patiently for my video, Dude. man. It's been hard. I mean, South America ain't a bad place. No, it's not. It's not. It's definitely not a bad place. Mm -mm. Um, all right. Let's see if there's any other questions. If you have questions for Marquette, um, definitely let's find out. Making more jewelry. Were you making jewelry? Uh, yeah, I get bored and I start making necklaces and stuff. Oh, sick. You made that one? Yeah, yeah I made this one. I made, do you, do you uh, sell them? No, I don't sell them yet. I just, I just got a bunch of beads and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to figure out if I'm going to um, make them and give them to like... Uh, charities or something or find a way to help people or i don't know i thought about i was actually having a plan i was having the battle hawks to set up something i can't even find other necklace but i was trying to get the last team i was on to set up something where i could go hang out with the little sick kids at the uh, children's hospital mm. and then i was just gonna make necklaces and stuff with them and talk to them about their days and stuff so i was gonna find something fun to do with it but coronavirus <laughs> that's actually really awesome that's a good idea i mean i i love that you can you can sell them and then have like the proceeds go to whatever charity yeah. you want um that's that's a good idea and i mean you're obviously like talented and you're good at it it looks like you bought it like it looks good <laughs> no, it, it's been sticking together pretty long pretty good so man there are some inappropriate ass questions on you guys are tripping man yeah. like <laughs> earlier <laughs> on somebody asked me why my eyelashes are so big and the answer to that question is because in quarantine i can't get my eyelash extensions, so i gotta glue them on so i mean you know what i mean like i'm just i'm making do with what i have they're very extremely long here man um, Marquette, are you going to do a podcast? You definitely should. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't feel like I got much to say. Uh, <laughs> they, these people will have to disagree with that. I think they disagree. I know. I, know. I don't know. I don't feel like I had that much to say. And plus, like, I am who I am. But at the same time, I don't want, I don't want to talk too much and let people get too close to me. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so. I mean, you can you can pick a subject and like commentate on that. So let's say whether it's sports or music, like you don't necessarily have to talk about yourself if you want to keep things private. But a lot of people want would probably love to hear your take on like the NFL right now or whatever mm -hmm. it is, like Marquette's view of whatever, you know, so I think that I, I think, I, think gotta wait, I gotta wait to retire to really <laughs> give my input. So yeah, I feel it. Yeah. Everyone, everyone on here is like, go back to the Raiders, go back to the Raiders, go back to the Raiders. I want, I really want that to happen. It's, it's y'all better start hitting up Mark Davis. Y'all better find the uh, yellow pages and see if he got a cell phone on. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the Vegas move? What, what are your thoughts but, on that? Man, I was excited. I thought I was gonna still be on the Raiders when they when they made the move, but um, I think it it'll be cool. I mean, they have a, I mean, the stadium looks fire as hell. It looked like a UFO. And like it's it's tight, like an all black stadium. Like it looks really nice, um, but I don't know. The Bay Area was so fire. That was one of my favorite places. You you in San Fran right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Born and raised. Definitely um, have to say it is a great place. Um, I love it out there. I miss. See, like we'll play a game, and then after we play a game, I go to I go back to Dublin where I stayed in a condo out there, 
and then I'll drive or Uber from Dublin to because I'll go to uh, PF Chains after the game, get me a uh, <laughs> probably a take down a whole bottle of wine, get my uh, <laughs> get my shrimp fried rice and head straight to San Francisco. Well, I'm not surprised. Hell yeah! <laughs> so I go to San Fran, hang out at them rooftop lounges and stuff. That was a vibe. It's usually too cold, but every now and then we have some nice days. So you yeah. got to pick the right days. Um, Andrew Wright said, yo, Marquette, I'm a punter slash kicker. Can you give me some advice? Huh. Advice. What's your I would, advice? I mean, I, I would probably just be good, but I'm sure you have better advice. I, I, than I, that. Um, I guess the, the advice that I can actually give them, it's all about the drop. If your drop is consistent, you're consistently hit a, pretty good punt but um yeah you, nothing gets you better more than just practicing right just practicing with the craft how many is. hours a day on average were you practicing when you were actively playing not much probably like uh probably like because you think about it we got a whole we usually got to show up at seven o'clock in the morning and then we leave at like me and jenna Kaus used to leave at like two everybody stayed until like four but for a punter uh, during the whole day, we would probably work for a total of uh, maybe two and a half hours. Oh wow, that's I thought you were gonna say like ten. No, <laughs> like all day. <laughs> now in college, in college, when um when I didn't know any better, I used to kick all day. I don't know why I did that, but I guess it whatever worked for me at that time. But a lot of people don't realize like when you you don't have to work all day. Just like people go in the weight room and stay there for like three hours and they only do like what two three different workouts but like now when i go to the weight room I'm, I'm only in there for like 30 to 45 minutes it probably also depends like if you're naturally just good at something you just you just have to put a less work and then somebody who's trying to get really good at it you know they have to put in more work but um are you yeah. still like friends with act like actively talking to anyone from the raiders like who are you friends with still who am i still talking to i got a couple of people seth roberts um who else who else who else I mean, every once in a while, or every blue moon, I might text Derek Carr. Um, and, but people start fading off. Like, um, when you stop playing, like, people don't really stay in contact as much. Like, as much as they might like to make it seem like everybody's family, like, ugh, at that moment in time when y'all all together, it's family then. But, like, when y'all split, like, uh, you don't really stay in contact with a lot of people. But I'll tell you this. I stayed in contact with a lot of people from the Broncos. I think every locker room is pretty different, but it was a lot of super cool people with Denver. And I hate that that shit didn't work out. Like, Man, what Denver's... I would do to be a fly on the wall in a locker room. <laughs> man. <laughs> the things nah. that go on in there, man. That would oh, be, my God. That would be something. You know how we, we, how we know each other is Lorenzo Neal, right? Yeah. That, that's like our main connect. Because so. <laughs> I used to work with him at the radio station. No, nah, he's dude. a good dude. I like Lorenzo a lot. I like Lorenzo a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, he was always right? so funny, man. He was like, because I had to get into work at five in the morning, right? So so did mm -hmm. he, because it was morning shows. But we worked at two different stations in the same building. And so every morning I would sit there like barely awake, barely alive. And he would always walk by with so much energy every single morning, like, what's up? And I'd be like, how are you so awake right now? Like right. no amount of coffee can wake me up at that hour. <laughs> no, nah, he he was a good dude. We used to ride the games together. Like he asked for a ride, and then we'd just ride to the games and vibe out. Man, he he was a really good dude. Got a beautiful family and everything. Like people like yeah, that. Yeah, he's he's a nice guy. All right, we have yeah. more questions from Anne Lebru. Do you play video games? And if oh, so, yeah. which ones? I've What's been on your Warzone. Favorite? Warzone is what I've been on really hard. I've been on Warzone a lot. And uh, if I get too bored, I'll be looking at Grand Theft Auto. YouTube videos, like, um, sometimes I get that bored where I'm just like, man, let me just look at what all I can actually do with this Grand Theft Auto game and blah, blah, blah. But Warzone's been a game I've been on really tough. Like, I get me, I get me, a, um, this little frozen snickerdoodles from Whole Foods. Oh, that's man, so I'm going to tell you this. I turn into one of the biggest fat asses when I'm playing video games. I sit <laughs> me a nice little thing here. And I'm just playing games, just eating those the whole time. Like, I'm surprised I'm still, like, in shape. How are you eating you need both of your hands to play? Well, because they're, like, little circle things. So, like, I just take a quick bite. Like, I got I to gotta, – <laughs> see, when I'm playing, I got to, like, play the game, and I got to run my character in the corner and tuck them in <laughs> where you can't get seen. And I sneak one in real quick, and then I'll just keep going. That's so funny, man. Yeah, video games, I mean, you do you – are you on Twitch? You should, you should make money on Twitch. I know. I don't – 
I don't, I don't feel like I play video games enough to be that good. Where, cause people but you know people would watch you, though, because, like, Twitch is, I mean, I'm not on it. I don't really watch it because I'm not huge on video games, but people are on there to watch other people play. You know people would watch you on there. I know. I would be talking so much, so much trash, man. I got some, actually, I got some people that hit me up on there, too, so it'll, it'll be a very interesting Twitch session. I think uh, while we're in quarantine, I predict you're going to end up joining Twitch at some point. <laughs> I, I actually got a Twitch account. I just there don't we go. I just don't um, we have it. another question. Zach Attack, what's your favorite basketball team? Let's talk basketball. Uh, I don't really watch sports like that. I mean, I don't know. I don't watch sports like that. Well, you know what I mean, mine is? Because someone just asked if I'm actually from the city. Hell yeah, born and raised, Warriors. Where? All day. All nah. damn day. <laughs> that's, all, that's all they talked about. They used to let us go to the games and stuff. It, man, I never got a chance to see that new stadium over there, too. Oh, man. I'm actually about two blocks away from it right now. Wow. Um, it is, wow. It is nice. That's, I've, I've, gone, I've been inside twice um, for games. So far, only twice. And, like, obviously, I really miss basketball. It's my favorite sport um, to – like watch just because I understand it the most I yeah. I still don't have like when it comes to football baseball like I get the kind of like basics but yeah. I need I need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one, like you know with that but I love uh, basketball so it's really cool to be right next to the stadium and when it uh or the arena when it opens you definitely have to come and check it out I'm gonna have to come out there and check it out. I mean I was planning on going there right after we finished a little XFL season but I can't go there right now yeah, things are things are weird. So yeah, I mean Phoenix, you're just gonna have to stick it out until until we're able to travel and whatnot. <laughs> oh my god, I know, I know, and that's like a ten hour drive too. Yeah, no, it is. It's long. Um, more questions. Someone wants to know your PS name tag. I don't know if you want to give it out, but if anyone. Wants... <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's out there somewhere. Y'all have to do some dig deep, some deep digging out there on my Twitter. <laughs> It's on there somewhere, though. Okay, so that's actually a fun game. So basically, whoever can find your, your PS name tag online gets to play with you. If you can't find it, then you can't play. It's out there somewhere. On my, it's on my Twitter for I'm sure. going to have to hit you up later. Um, well, we only have um, we have FIFA and, and the NBA, the current NBA game. Uh, Come on. On that's PS. What, oh, that's what you got? Yeah. You be Do you have either? I don't really, I mean, I can play the basketball one. I'm really bad at FIFA. I've only played it like twice. Um, that's my boyfriend stuff. I don't, I like playing, like I enjoy, oh, we have the UFC too. I enjoy yeah. playing, even if I'm terrible at it, I actually have a lot of fun. So I think actually UFC is probably my favorite one to play because yeah. you can literally press anything and just punch and kick. Like it doesn't matter. Gee, you might as well go ahead and get more to come at 11 then. <laughs> I, I hate sports games though, because they're not real. Like I used to, so especially being on the Madden game, like it used to be people that uh politically not might not be as known as some of the other athletes, but they're really fast or really good, and they make them look trash as hell on a video game. I'm like, man, this ain't. Cool. And also, man had Derek Carr running faster than me at one point, and I was like, that, that <laughs> will never happen. So like, I'm not playing this shit. I'm not it's funny, I actually, I didn't realize that because you're an athlete playing athletic video games is probably really weird for you because you're used to the real thing whereas for me like clearly i'm not an athlete so for me it's like oh i'm playing basketball i'm, I'm punching Man. someone's lights out in ufc <laughs> oh my god no nah, it's, it's fun it, no nah, it's not fun it's not fun i hate yeah. that. marquette amy asks do you have a favorite tattoo that you do have? i have a favorite tattoo if so i like this one it. Let me see. Is that that looks like DNA stuff, or no uh, gears? What is that? <laughs> it's uh, it's called cyberpunk. Oh, it's like a cyber, like a steampunk, cyberpunk, whatever sort of thing. So, what is what significance is that for you? It's just I feel like a lot of stuff that I've been through. Um, I don't know how I went through it, but I kind of felt like I wasn't, I can't be human to go through some of the stuff I went through, and still had the same mindset that I got now, and even making it even stronger with all That's the stuff awesome. I've been through. So. I like that. Do you have a tattoo that you got that you that you don't like or that you regret? I love all of them. All my tattoos. I even got a Raider tattoo. But also, I usually get my tattoos every three to five years because I feel like that's a, a different chapter or uh, significant. <laughs> and uh, shit, I was with the Raiders for like six years. So like, man, that was a uh, that was. Where's the Raiders awesome. tat? Is it like invisible? It's on my leg. It? Oh. It's on my leg. I can't. I got my workout leggings on. 
Oh, that's okay. But, um, I won't make you take them off. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Is it just like the symbol, like the logo? Yes, the logo, but then it has um, more cyber stuff around it. Um, I added more to it a couple of, like, last year. But, um, yeah, this shit is tight. I love all my tattoos. They, It's a story for everything, the reason why I got them at that time. So. Do you have a, do you have any plans? Like, do you have something that you know you want to get, like, when we're out of quarantine and you're, you can go back in the tattoo uh, shop? <laughs> Uh, I was looking at I was looking at getting um, a very interesting looking airplane. Like I gotta I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get it put on my put on my arm or something. But it'll be it'll be something representing a connecting flight because I feel like the XFL was a connecting flight to revive my career. Because um, I mean I'm sure I'm sure it's been word out there basically uh, where maybe a coach or somebody put something out basically. Making it seem like I was just a tough person to work with, and I was—I'm never a tough person to work with. It's just—I mean, you got to take time to understand who you're dealing with. Like you don't—I feel like you don't get people—you um, don't give or people don't get jobs based off of their personalities and stuff. You're supposed to give people the jobs that are actually good at what they do and let them do what they do to make them successful. And um, <clears throat> it's almost like um, <clears throat> I would get—they would try to put me in a box. And it's like I can't I can't function like that. And the fun thing about the XFL, it uh they let me be myself. Like they, they even got gave me the microphone during the awesome. game. I was talking to the crowd, just having fun and playing even better and better. But uh everybody doesn't operate the same and uh and I think getting that airplane representing connected flight was is the mark that I need. It's gonna be small because it wasn't a three to five year thing, it was only five weeks, uh, a couple of months. And uh, <laughs> Right, right. Shoot, so it'll represent. That's cool. I like that idea. Yeah. I've actually always wanted to get an airplane and a traveling sort of tattoo, but I haven't yet. But something to do with. I actually like the idea of a paper airplane, like a, like a little triangle yeah. sort of thing, like a cute one. Yeah. Um, so I've been thinking about that. So that'll be cool. As soon as this is over and I can get back in <laughs> tattoo shop. <laughs> Man, ain't so, none of them open out here. They're what? None of them are open out here. No, I know. No, I mean, nothing's open. Like, so technically, so in California, we're supposed to be done with quarantine at the end of this month. But I feel like they keep extending it. So every time they say it's done, and then like the day before everything opens, they're like, okay, well, six more weeks. I, I mean, actually just heard that LA, I heard that LA just extended theirs until July. I mean, let's be so. real now. If they, if they was to straight up tell everybody straight up that we're going to be in quarantine for five months, that's not going to happen. So they got to tell it in pieces bit by bit so you do you think that like they already knew how long we'd be in it but they just keep like going like that like little by little yeah yeah i know i mean of course they knew and um obviously this ain't it's something that you don't really want to play with because i've i've known people back at the house in georgia where they lifted the freaking uh thing where people got sick um and several people have died out there so like which is crazy so this wow. ain't, it ain't nothing to play with. It's, it's, I don't know. We all ended up getting it when we played the Seattle team in uh, St. Louis. The whole team got it. And it happened so fast. It was crazy. They got the virus? Yeah. That's, Did you? I'm sure that's, what, I'm sure that's what it was. Yeah. I was out, I was down for like two days. Oh, you At were first, sick, but you never got tested. So like, you just don't, you guys just didn't know exactly like for sure, but I mean, you pretty much. I don't, I don't think the, I don't think the flu is gonna come around February. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, that's wild. So what were so if you technically if you had it, um, how bad was it? And because I know some people barely get symptoms and some people are like can't breathe. So how was it? For yeah, you? I just kept coughing up mucus and like I just had like a um, like a little fever. Like I well my fever would get worse when I would lay down. Like I was actually I actually because I still act slow sometimes when I'm sick. And I was actually thinking about going to the store and putting like steak on my face or something because it was so hot. Like, but it, <laughs> I only I only got a really bad steak on your face. You know they you know they sell something called ice packs, right? <laughs> that wasn't gonna work either. It was gonna melt as soon as it touched. But, oh um, man. Yeah, it was. Um, man, I was just getting these bad fevers like late at night when I'm asleep, and I would cut the heater on, so it was just bad for like. But it lasted for two days. And at first, I thought it was just a hangover because I did drink a glass of wine or a bottle of wine. <laughs> but it was, um, I'm like, that's what it had to be. It had to be. Because then they came out with a statement saying um, it was a player on Seattle that had it. And um, they played against us and they played against Houston, I think. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was interesting. 
That's crazy. I, I personally don't know anyone like in my personal bubble that's had it. Um, I know people who's like their grandmas have had it or their aunts have had it, but I don't have like any friends who actually had it. I guess we've all just been quarantining really well. So yeah, that's crazy. Are you one of those people <laughs> by any What's chance? Said he cut state media. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, did someone ask a question? No, somebody said he cut that state media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're putting it on your face. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Marquette, oh, when can you make it to Atlanta so we can boot? <laughs> man, I don't know, man. I don't I don't really like going back to Georgia like that. Like I don't I like staying out here on the west coast, uh, on the west side of the country. This is Phoenix considered the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like staying out here on the West so why Coast. Why do you why do you like the West Coast more than, than any other place in the US? I feel what like I feel like being out here on the West Coast, a lot of people promote health. Um, yeah, everyone's like clean green, living. And everyone's living. like gluten free. I've been a vegetarian since I was 11, but now it's really popular to be vegan. And yeah. you're right. Are you like, what are your, what are your, what's your diet like? Oh, what's no. I, I turn up on my food. But I just know I'm always motivated to work out because you always see somebody running and stuff on the sidewalk. And I'm like, yeah, right, yeah. I need to step my game up. So it's like everybody's just working. Uh, I just like it over here. I like palm trees. I don't. I didn't see a lot of palm trees when I was back in Georgia. I didn't see a lot of cactus. And palm mountains. trees are yeah, definitely. Um, L. A. If you go to L. A., palm trees are everywhere. Obviously, mm -hmm. in Phoenix. There's lots of cacti. <laughs> I know. Um, I know you. There's a, like lots of like crazy insects and things in in Phoenix too, isn't there? Well, not maybe like in Phoenix, but like kind of on the outskirts. Like, do you ever see like scorpions and? Crazy yeah, thing like that. It, there's some scorpions out here. It was one in my weight room downstairs. I, I was lifting weights and I saw them all just walking. A scorpion like, was in the weight room. Yeah, but like. Oh no. I know. I had to get it resprayed. He was. No, he was no. There. My boy had a fresh pair of chucks on too, just stomping around the bottom. How big was like, that thing? Yeah. He was big. He had some tennis shoes on. <laughs> the, the scorpion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm literally just imagining a scorpion with shoes. Man. <laughs> it's I like, to, no, I thank you. To. That's like the murder hornets now. Have you seen those things? Man, that was a setup. Somebody brought them things over here because they ain't got no business over here. But No, definitely. They were definitely brought over here just like everything, just like the virus, man. I don't know. I, know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. like they... it. Do you believe in any of the conspiracy theories about the virus, or are you just yeah. straight up like the virus is the virus, it is what it is, or do you believe nah, in I, that, like 5G tower sort of thing that people were talking about? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely believe in some of that. I look into some of that. Um, I don't know. I I know I got my own opinions, and I feel very strongly about how I feel about it. And um, I don't know. I I just know it ain't just a virus. Like it's other shit. I know, it's it's but, hard to know, like right. It's hard to really nah, know, but I do I, think I do think it's multiple things myself. Um, I'm not normally like a conspiracy theorist, but I definitely think something fishy is going on. I don't know what, right? I don't nah, know exactly. I, I can't know. tell you what, but something, because this nah, is not this isn't normal. This is not normal. Yeah, when I know <laughs> something, I know something, and my instincts are pretty good, but. So it but is I mean, what it is. We, there's, there's definitely good things coming out of all of this. I mean, first of all, the, the earth is getting, like, really, really clean. Yeah. So I will say the water. Um, I saw a meme the other day that was so funny. There was, um, like, a stream or a river or something in Italy, and uh -huh. there was an alligator swimming. It's super clear. You could see the alligator or the crocodile or whatever. And then the meme said um, something like, even the Louis Vuitton bags are out swimming or something like that. <laughs> like, it was so funny because you never really see animal. Like, <laughs> water isn't clear anymore. You know, now it's getting all nice. So there's that. And yes. then there's also the thing of, like, getting to try new hobbies. Like, you just got a turntable and you can, like, work on that. And so. No, it's definitely a lot of good coming out of it. Like, a lot of people should take advantage of this time anyway. Like, it's perfect. Um Shoot, that's I even talked about that before because I shut all my social media down for a little bit. But that's one of the things I talked about. Like you should find time to get better, find a way to make yourself better through all this, and then come out with the. If you don't come out with a new skill, then you just wasted all your time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, I mean, like I have. You're right. I have my days where I really just want to be lazy and do nothing and watch TV all day, and that's okay because we can't you can work. Do that. We can't work our ass off every single day. No, you can't. Some people do. Like I like to have my my downtime and and chill out. But then, but then of course. like I want to work on my craft as well as you want to work on yours and like I think it's really 
and you really have no excuse nowadays to say, oh, well, I don't have time to learn that. Oh, oh, you want to learn a new language? You don't have time? Really? really? Like, I think you do. <laughs> yeah. So it, unless you're an essential worker, then you, you still might say you don't have time because they're actually like, you know, out there working all day long. So I uh, know. Um, let's see if there's any other questions out here. Um, his brother in Georgia. Hold on, say it again. Do you know Ty Long? Someone's asking. Oh, yeah, I trained yeah, yeah. with him and his brother. No, Ty Long's cool. I know his brother too. They, they're some good people. I've trained with him before. Ty Long, he did his thing. He came out from the CFL to the uh, Chargers and he just killed it. He killed it. Cool. There's that. Uh, lots of people are still asking, are you going to the NFL? If you just joined us, Marquette definitely covered that. And he says he was waiting for his phone call. <laughs> when he gets I'll just say. <laughs> I'm waiting for the phone call. Ain't nobody called yet. But I don't think – I think a lot of people – they're just only looking at, like, the quarterbacks and stuff. Like, the punters and kickers are like a uh, down low on a totem pole type thing. So, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. No, nah, that's the Sit plan. That's the plan is to definitely get back to the NFL for sure. Nothing, nothing yeah, other than definitely. the NFL, though. Like, that's that's the plan, though. Okay, so we, we have one person asking the same question eight times, and he said he's not going to stop asking it until you answer. So I'm going to say it because, Marquette, are you going to pay for my flight out west from Bolser 43? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they must be in Atlanta or something. He's like, I'm not going to stop answering until – or I'm not going to stop asking until I get an answer. Oh, my God. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> so, hey, the Southwest flight's cheap, though, I bet. They probably like $20. That's true. I actually wonder how it's going to be when, well, flights are off. There's still flights now going places because some people have to travel for work or whatever. But I wonder yeah. how that's all going to be when things go back to normal. Are flights going to be cheap or are flights going to be super expensive because they lost so much money that they want to try to get it back? Yeah. I'd be wondering, what are they, who are they going to pay back since everything costs so much? No, I, <laughs> I don't know. I had to personally cancel two flights already that I had planned during this time. So it, it's Dang. been crazy. Um, at any least tips Southwest on staying? Hmm? Sorry, go I was, ahead. I was gonna say at least Southwest has the uh, option to cancel a flight or change a flight. That's the right. Best thing ever. Yeah, 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 that would suck if they didn't let you. <laughs> Be so mad. Um, Amy wants to know any tips on staying positive at this time. Hopefully, you don't mean coronavirus positive. You mean like happy positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? what um, what's your tip, Marquette? My tip would be, um, hopefully she's uh, she's over age. Um, able to drink a glass of wine, get you a glass of Cabernet, sit down, <laughs> go look at, go outside and admire the beauty like around you, like nature, whatever. But just sit, t sit down and um, I don't know, just think about things that you're happy for and what you're grateful for. Um, and one of the best ways to start your day off is thinking of three to five different things that you're thankful for. And so write them down. Start yeah. yeah, write them down and everything. If you're trying to accomplish a goal, uh, write it down, type it down, and hang it up somewhere. Make sure you see it every day. That's a way to start. But um, I think uh, something that helped me stay positive is, I don't know, I just, I walk around my house, and as much as I walk around my house, I just talk about how thankful I am for the position that I'm in. So That's good. You seem like a very positive, uplifting person. So I like that. And we have another question. She's dying for this answer. Who's your favorite mm -hmm. PR director? <laughs> Who uh, who asked the question though? <laughs> that was let's read the that was Jeanette M Kiss. She said, "Answer please." <laughs> oh, I gotta find this. I wanna find this. Yeah, go scroll up. Maybe like ten ten or so people. Oh. You see it? No, I don't see it. But I don't know. It's man. I always like to hang out with the PR directors anyway. Like. I like all of them. I, I even, from Will Kiss to, to um, as much as I didn't have too much fun in Denver, but Patrick was a good dude, and um, my guy from the uh, Brian Stoll from the from the Battle Hawks, he was super cool. Like he he was one of my favorites too. So between Brian Stoll and uh, Will Kiss. They were my two favorite PR people because I would just – that's how bored we would get, though, as punters and kickers. We would just go hang out. Well, I would just hang out with the uh, PR people and just 
kick it with them or hang, uh, walk around and ask questions to other people around the facility. That's fun. That sounds like a fun time. Um, yeah. Savvy Charger wants to know who was your favorite teammate, I guess, ever in any on any team. My favorite teammate ever. Um, man, who like somebody who maybe got your jokes or like you could text when you were having a crisis or when like I was when I was in Oakland, uh, it was Rod Streeter. Rod Streeter is one of my favorite teammates. Um, we hung out all the time. It was Rod Streeter and uh, yeah. I was I was always hanging out with him and stuff, but um, most of the time too, I was mostly by myself. So I had other friends outside of football that I would hang out with. Yeah, so you can say you're your own favorite teammate. How about that? Yeah, the <laughs> punter. <laughs> um, so we're getting close to the hour because like Instagram Live has you know an hour max. So I want to give you an opportunity to let us know like kind of what you're working on. Um, I know you're obviously you stay working on your music and your music's really fun and catchy. So. Um, are you working on any new music right now? Are you releasing anything? Yeah, so check this out. I got um, I have a new EP album coming out called Connection. Let me show y'all a picture of it right quick. Connection. Oh yeah, I just saw that on your um on your story. You had posted a clip, right? Yeah. So uh, I got two Instagram pages. I got my uh, OBJ Daily page where I post all my crazy stuff, and then I got the football page. So where I uh, gotta be serious, but <laughs> um, I got the Connection EP album coming out, eight songs. Um, it was originally going to be for the XFL, uh, for um, the stuff that I created for the XFL. It's going to be called 93 Days because that's how long we had to be out there for. But I just changed, I changed it to Connection. And um, it's songs that I did out there, but then I did like uh, about two, different, two, three different songs back out here in Arizona when we came back. And uh, <clears throat> kind of describing some of the stuff I went through out there. Um, and also just songs for fun, like that just fit the vibe of it. That's cool. I like it. I like it. So everybody check that out. Um, you, uh, your music's super fun. And I, I love that. I love that. Like your music is, does have that EDM vibe. It's super random and it like, it fits your personality really well. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate um, you. Yeah, of course. So uh, I guess we're going to conclude today. I want to make sure that everybody who's watching, first of all, thank you for tuning in. Um, definitely follow Marquette King. Um, if you're not already, he's super fun. And I do Honey, I'm Home every single day. I'm going to have a new guest on tomorrow, the next day, and the next day after that. Actually, tomorrow is going to be um, my friend Edie Amin from Outlaws, which is like we're Tupac, you know, Tupac's group. So uh -huh. um, definitely chime in for that. And any final words, Marquette? Um, Man. Take the floor. Any final <laughs> words? Um, I don't know. What could I say? What could I leave everybody with before I take off? Uh, it could be, it could be um, a question. It could be a thought. It could be a thought uh, in your head. I think I, what I would tell everybody is just be themselves. Stay true to who you are. Don't worry about uh, other people's flaws or what other people got going on in a negative way. And uh, you can only control what you can control. Um, and with what's going on now, we can only control what we can control. So find a way around the box to get yourself better or improve yourself or just be a better person, period. I love it. Yeah. Great final words to leave everybody with. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for the questions. We super appreciate it. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks so much. Deuce. Bye.